Hi everyone and welcome to today's live feed. Um, if you're watching this later on, I'm kind of doing this unboxing live on camera. I had uh, a friend and a customer of ours who owns a business called Artworks here in Edmonton. It's a really cool flower shop and collectibles. Anyway, he had uh, picked up some items from an estate. He pulled up with his truck today and said, uh, I don't want them in my truck, you can have them for free. So what a nice guy. Um, we're gonna go through the box and see exactly what I got because he literally just dropped the stuff off and ran. <laughs> uh, so let's go through and see. I'm gonna flip the camera around. And I'm joined today by my friend Kelly, who's come on some adventures. We tried poutine together for the first yes, time. I'm a poutine guy. That's right. <laughs> uh, okay. French. Were you here when when he came by and dropped this stuff off? No. Oh yeah, he was leaving when you came in. Okay. Yeah. Um, so these are just things that came from an estate. X Sixteenth Battalion Annual Dinner, Victoria, BC, nineteen thirty-two. So battalion photo. It's not quite. It's a bit of a yard long. That's you know, nice older picture. 16th in the uh the discharge paper that's really cool world war one discharge document i didn't even notice that that's what that was until you actually have a look at it and read it you can look up his service record so he was a world war one vet and i'm guessing this was a reunion sort of dinner that they did with the vets makes sense now this kind of caught my eye this is a military uh like a a bag, but you can see that the soldier had these sort of pinup girls that he did on the outside of it. Now that would be probably more, um, I don't think this would be his World War One bag. Let's see, what's the name on here? Tiny. Lulu. Okay, so he had he did some cartoon work and some drawings. And uh, if you're wondering, we are open for business right now, so we'll probably have some customers kind of walking through, but that's that's a pretty neat piece. I think that was carried around through battles and around the war and it, it made it here to my shop. Really, really neat piece. And it looks like he's got his Bible. Probably a couple of them here from the looks of things. This one has notations in it and some hymns. It's really, you know, you don't know what you're going to get in a box like this. It's just stuff that the uh, the family obviously felt that they didn't want and they gave to him and he passed along to me. It's a curling trophy. Curling really popular in Canada. Or well, I mean I, I don't know about how now. It it happens. I don't have you ever curled before, Kelly? A long time ago. Really? The, uh, brooms, the bristle brooms. I have never been curling before in my life. Okay. This is a tin full of that must be him there, maybe. Oops. So I wonder if he served in both wars. Because there's World War I discharge documents. And then there's World War II era, 1946. Unless they had um, a kid that was also in the war. There they are, kind of just having fun at the beach. Oh, there's some... There they are. Looks like they're at the barracks. There's a group shot. That looks like it's First World War to me. These are some of the boys in the home. Dad, third from the right, standing in the uh, convalescent home in England. Third from the right, okay. Uh, I guess I'd be him there, maybe with a mustache. Interesting. Okay, these look like... Um, that's a driver's license from the 1940s. Be pretty, and a chauffeur's license. So those are old driver's licenses. Carling, that's a that's a beer, Carling Beer, Carling Brewery. So I guess after the war, maybe he got a job working for Carling. I'm trying to piece together a a, a person's uh, life here, you know, with the documents. What's this? Canadian Pacific Railway Company, British Columbia Coast Steamship Service, 1949. Uh, I enclose here with your certificate of efficiency as a lifeboatman, granted after examination. Well, that's interesting. So spent some time maybe on the sea. Boy, there's all kinds of documents, and I find this kind of stuff fascinating. I, I don't know about you guys. Um... When we get a collection like this in, because this is someone's life, the family obviously didn't want it. 
or sometimes you run out and there is no family left. And so they end up coming to an antique store. We like to sell these sorts of things to a collector who's going to keep the, um, the pieces together and uh, keep it together to honor this gentleman. There he is there. Baggage check claim, little pouch. Okay, let's see. Painting and decorating encyclopedia. Well, that probably will come in handy if I do get around to getting that new building put up. <laughs> see, Ford Ranger pickup, Buick Century. Had a little trouble with my uh, old Buick this morning. I'm gonna have to, it looks like a knife maybe? Oh, a box cutter. Well, that's just handy. <laughs> One thing that came in that was a little bit morbid, I'll show you in a minute, because it is a little bit on the creepy side. There's something creep, uh, there is something creepy. It's not in this box. Oh, that's heavy. Oh, that's got some weight to it. Okay. Maybe home movies. There's a lot of them in here. It'd be interesting to see. Now, there are there have been special things found on film like this. Like people have discovered that there was, you know, early images of Marilyn Monroe and you never know what's going to be on them. Sometimes it's worthwhile actually looking to see. Somebody was a bowler. Bowl Arena Lanes. That's his little day planner. And look at all these patches. Let's see. I love old patches. And some buttons in here. Manitoba Carling. So yeah, uh, brewery products. Dave, his name was Dave. Wow. So he worked at the Carling Brewery, it looks like part of the Carlin Conservation Club. So if those are from 1969 and 70, I'm going to say he was probably there in the 60s and 70s. But there's all his patches that would go on your jacket, on your arm. Neat. Okay. Curious to know what's on those videos or on the, on the reels. I have to fire up that old Carbon Arc projector. I've got autographs. To bring this over and see what this is. Sometimes these were just little notebooks that you kept around. Dear Nancy, a rabbit's nose is skinny on that you can depend for a little powder puff. Interesting. <laughs> 1963. So this is somebody, uh, it looks like maybe a little girl's notebook that she had at the time. Hmm. My heart doesn't beat for you because I'm the last kid in the book. Merry Christmas. Cute. You never know when you're going to find something. I looked through a book like this once at someone's house and they had a handwritten letter in there from Walt Disney that uh, they went to their house for dinner once when she was kids. Her parents were friends with Walt Disney and there it was right in there, a little note. We really enjoyed having you over for dinner and, you know, I think they said something about the food that was served and it's, yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Disney. How cool was that? Didn't end up buying that piece because they wanted to keep it in the family, but it was really neat. There's a little sampler. Let me live in a house by the side of the road and be a friend to man. All sorts of fun little things, old pictures, photographs. But the one thing that was kind of the, the creepy thing, okay, you're probably wondering what the creepy thing is too. If you look down by your side there, see what looks like a little table? See that wooden table right yeah, there? Table. Yeah, it's not just a wooden table. I'm gonna come around and uh, <laughs> we're gonna have a look, see? There is, if you notice on this table, it's folding, it's portable. I'm going to bring it out. Melissa would not be a fan of this. I can tell you right away. So any, any guesses why it's perforated? Maybe somebody uh, watching home can tell right away. I can tell you, and I will tell you in a minute, but any guesses why that's perforated, Kelly? Tie the guy down on it. <laughs> um, if it is for somebody to go on, but yeah, it's a portable autopsy table. Bum, 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 and that 
is for the fluids to go through. Like I said, it's creepy. Um, maybe I'll be able to sell this to Bob who comes through. He's, uh, he's a guy who likes the creepy stuff. But yeah, they would use them as a uh, yeah, portable autopsy table or a coffin stand. Creepy sort of thing. Like I said, there was one creepiness. But um, the other thing he brought in, hey, I mean, it was free. I got a cool old chair. It was missing the casters off the bottom. But when I bought all those bottles off that lady a while back, the ones that Bob ended up buying off me, she gave me all these little bits and pieces that were uh, accessories. So look, I actually have casters that are meant to go on the bottom of a chair leg. So, I, you know, you keep these things around in case somebody needs parts, and then I'm the guy who needs it. So I can throw some casters back on that chair and have a nice little uh, oak office chair. Neat stuff. Little kid's ironing board. I've got to clean this stuff up. This is what happens. People just drop stuff off. Uh, in fact, my friend Kelly dropped off some stuff too. He's here visiting. Oh, I don't know who pulled up in that. <laughs> One of my customers inside. Cool. Um, anyway, my friend Kelly gave me these. That if at some point I can do a little uh, counter or stool inside that uh, he let me do that. I'm going to see. This looks like it's a, uh, is it a Beaumont? Yeah, it's a Beaumont. This is a Canadian only car, actually. That's pretty cool. Maybe I gotta ask the guy who uh, pulled up in the Beaumont what the deal is with that. What year is your Beaumont? It's outside. Six, Six? okay. Are you, you're, <laughs> we were just admiring it. I was doing a little walkabout and I was like, that, wait a minute, that's a Canadian only Beaumont. It is. 1966? 66. Did you? I've had it 35 years now. Wow. So was it in pretty good shape when you got it? It was. And then my. Uh son took it out when he was 14 and when I was gone and he blew the hood right over the roof so I, oh. I, I fixed it in 99 and it, it, it needs a bit of a paint job again. Yeah, it looks pretty good. He pulled a Tommy Boy with that car. Did you ever see that movie? Yeah, the oil. They, they've put the oil under the hood and then the, so. Oh, I mean, uh, I love the car. It's I did the motor twice already so the last time I... Uh, I raised the compression and I put lumpier pistons in it. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty beefy. Four and a quarter now. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's a cool car. <laughs> yeah, I, lo I love it. I love the car. I had a 69 Nova SS too. I got rid of the race car, but. It, no, but I think it. Everybody still wants the car, right? Is it okay if I go and look at the interior? Oh, it's rather, but you go I get, Okay. Yeah. I've got permission to go look at the interior of this fellow's car. It's really windy out, so the audio is going to be horrible. Bucket seats console shift anyway i don't want to i don't want to go right through the man's car but that's a cool ride you don't see too many of those anyway well i'm going to go back inside i'm going to try and finish up with going through that box and get this stuff sorted and organized but anyway just thought i'd do a quick little live feed and show you some of the stuff that's happening around the shop today i can hear my phone ringing inside so i'm gonna go answer that <laughs> you guys have a wonderful day we'll see you all soon and uh new videos coming soon bye guys bye for now